All right, so this is Thursday's Foundations lesson, and today's gonna be a little bit different, so you don't need your whiteboard, your marker, or eraser. Um, instead, we're going to do our drill sounds, and then we're going to read a story that's behind me, and we're gonna focus on a couple things in that story. The first thing is we're gonna focus on some digraphs that are in that story, and the other thing we're gonna focus on is how the author um, kind of makes their sentences so that they're a little bit more interesting and some things that they add to the writing to make it a little bit more interesting um, to read. So let's get started with our drill sounds and then we'll read our story. And I'm actually gonna shuffle these up because I haven't shuffled them in the last couple of days. All right. L lamp, ooh. O octopus ah, V van V, I E pine I, U up ah, uh, A apple ah, uh, A L L ball all, C H chin ch, P pimp, Z zebras, U E rule U, T tot, S H ship sh, K kike. D dubbed ah. E ed ed F fun O E home O A N fan an O or E E Pete E R rat er X fox X, S bugs Z C cack J judge A E safe a, Q, U, Queen, Qu, and Nut, N, W, H, Whistle, W, U, E, Mule, U, T, H, The, Thumb, V, B, Bat, B, G, Game, G, S, Snakes, I, Itch, I, Y, Yellow, Y, W, Wind, W, H, Hat, C, K, Sock, M, Man, mm. Okay. All right, let's look at our story. Change my screen so that you can see it all. Okay. So this story is called, well actually, why don't you take a second to see if you can figure out what the title is. If you're having a hard time, you can definitely tap out these two words. All right, so let's tap out these words together. Mm, oh, you can't see my hand. Mm, Mac, Mac and B, uh, G. Ooh, who notices something in that word? Yeah, this is a word that has a suffix, bugs. Are we talking about more than one bug? Absolutely. So I'm going to underline the base word, bug, and I'm going to circle the suffix. Now we're going to tap out the base word. Ready? B, uh, g, bug. Now we're gonna say the whole word, bugs. All right, let's go ahead and start by reading um, the story. What I want you to listen for is how I, when I stop my voice. There's a lot of different punctuation in here, and so we're gonna practice what it sounds like when we pay attention to that punctuation. When you're reading your stories and your books, you should be paying attention to the punctuation as well. 
Mac is not a fan of bugs. Notice what's right here. I'm gonna get a different color for this. This is a comma, okay? And that comma is telling us that we need to take a breath. So let's start over. Mac is not a fan of bugs. Not one bit. So I paused here and then I finished the rest of that sentence. Mac is not a fan of bugs. Not one bit. If a bug gets on Mac's bed, notice another comma. Again, take a breath. If a bug gets on Mac's bed, Mac gets mad. Mac yells at the bug. Notice another comma, that means we take a breath. Get off this bed, you big bad bug! If the bug does not go, notice again. Hey kiddo, do you wanna come see over here? Because people can't see when you're standing right there. Yeah. See, perfect. Now they can see and we can see. Let's read that sentence again. If the bug does not go, Mac yells for his dad. If dad is not there, again, a comma, Mac runs. Not yet, you can after, okay, but not yet. So we practice reading, noticing those commas. In a lot of your books, you will see sentences that have commas. Even in your writing, if you're feeling like your sentence is long, you can add a comma and make it longer. Okay, let's look at something else that the writer does. So there's two things I wanna point out. The first one is about the sentences and the second one is about something the writer added to make the story better. Yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna pause for a moment. Okay, so let's first talk about the sentences. Can you move so that they can see please? Thank you. Let's first talk about those sentences. Now, this first sentence, Max is not a fan of bugs, not one bit. Could the author have stopped that sentence at the comma? Mac is not a fan of bugs, period. Sure, but did this second part, not one bit, make the sentence more interesting? It absolutely did. So they expanded the sentence, but instead of adding another thought, they kind of added a more exciting phrase, not one bit, kind of tells us that really, he does not like bugs, like at all, okay? So the sentences here are great. The other thing I want you to notice about the sentence is that because the author added not one bit, he added an exclamation point. Exclamation points always make writing more fun, but you can't just put it on any sentence. Your sentence has to have the words to make it exciting. Mac is not a fan of bugs, not one bit. Come out here please so that they can see. Thank you. Let's look at the next sentence. If a bug gets on Mac's bed, Mac gets mad. Hmm, could they have said Mac gets mad if a bug gets on his bed? Sure, but it's not quite as interesting with the way that they wrote it. So sometimes you can move the words in your sentence around to make it a little bit more interesting. Let's keep going. Mac yells at the bug. Could the sentence have stopped there? Sure, Mac yells at the bug. But this author went, can I give these to you over here? You can look at them over there. Because, thank you. 
this author added words that Mac says, and that's really a very cool way to make your writing interesting. So a couple of things I want to point out to you when you add words that a character might say. These are called quotation marks. And we've talked about these, but I'm gonna go over them again. Quotation marks, when you get to it, that means that the words that are in between these two marks are words that the character is saying. So you guys have read this in books many, many times, but you might have noticed what the quotation mark is. You might have even thought about what the words are in between. But when you're writing, you can add words to, that a character might say in your story using those quotation marks and it'll make your story more interesting to read. So the author here could have said, Mac yells at the bugs and stopped there, but he didn't. He added that comma and then he wrote the words that Mac yells. Get off this bed, you big bad bug. And then he put an exclamation point. You can almost see that in your head. Let's keep going. If the bug does not go, Mac yells for his dad. That sentence could have said, Mac gets his dad if the bug doesn't go. Okay, but because they started with, if the bug does not go, makes it a little bit more interesting. And they get a chance to use that comma. If dad is not there, Mac runs. Okay. So the way that this author turned the sen sentences around to make them a little bit more interesting and to use commas is a great way that you can also expand your sen sentences to not only add more information, but also to add some interesting um, words or expression. So let's read through this one more time, and then we're gonna call it a day for today's foundations. Mac and bugs. Mac is not a fan of bugs. Not one bit. If a bug gets on Mac's bed, Mac gets mad. Mac yells at the bug. Get off this bed, you big bad bug. If the bug does not go, Mac yells for his dad. If dad is not there, Mac runs. All right, guys. I hope that was an interesting foundations lesson, and I will see you next time. Bye.